Hello and welcome inside the WOSN studios. Time for another week of Press Row. Joined by Todd Walker, Aaron Matthews, Mark Kuntz. I'm Matt Finkel. Three weeks of the regular season remain. So at this juncture, what is our biggest surprise of the high school football season? The Ada Bulldogs is, in my opinion, the biggest surprise based on when I saw them earlier this season, back in week three, which seems like an eternity ago because it, realistically it was an eternity ago. About a month ago, ago yeah. Um, you know, in that game, when they lost to LCC, it really seemed to take the air out of that team. And they come back the following week, lose again, but since then, then they, they had Seth Conley go down, and, but since then they've been a completely different team. And it's been Trent Jolliffe, you know, almost like a single wing type system that they've been running with Bob Olin's past happy offense. Trent Jolliffe's done an admirable job at the quarterback position uh, for Ada. And right now it looks like they're in the playoffs. Not only are they in, as of this past week's ratings, they're hosting a game. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I thought I did the game with Ada Spencerville when Conley got hurt. I think it was the week after they played well, LCC. Yeah. And they couldn't do anything against Spencerville with Seth Conley. Then he went down. I'm thinking they might not win another game. And they haven't lost since. To me, that's been the biggest surprise, uh, you know, from that point on to now. You know, really, other than that, I don't know that there's been a whole lot that has caught me off guard as to, uh, you know, somebody way better than I thought or way worse. I think a lot of things have come to expectations, but uh, I give Ada credit for fighting through that injury to Connolly and kind of redefining themselves in their season. To me, the biggest surprise, not necessarily has been the overall strength of the Western Buckeye League, but the fact that here we are, week seven, and there are five to six Western Buckeye League teams with legitimate chances to make the postseason. Last couple of years, WBL's had a hard time getting even two teams in. And all of a sudden, you're looking at Wapak, Salina, St. Mary's, OG, and Bath, all with very good chances. Elida with an outside chance to make the postseason as well. Van Wert with an outside chance. So, to me, we knew the WBL was going to be strong this year, but I don't think anybody suspected it would be that strong and have that many playoff contenders. Yeah, I agree with you. My choice was Bath just sitting at four and three and specifically what they've done the last two weeks they really seem to be hitting their stride and on the same along the same lines Van Wert they're under 500 which that could be our fault for building them up and there being a lot of preseason hype around them but I'm surprised that they're three and four right now well you look at the games they've lost they've been they've been in every game they've not been blown out at all They've lost some games in the fourth quarter with some really good efforts by other teams. So the, it, it's a very good three and four team, much like last year, they were a very good four and six team. Back to week two and week three for Van Wert is the telltale sign with this team, in my opinion. And I was one of those who was buying in as well. Thought that this is a team that could make some noise in the Western Buckeye League. They blow a 21 point lead to St. Mary's in week two. They blow a lead and lose to OG at home by a point 26, 25 back in week three when they were up like 19 to 6 or something like that going into the fourth quarter. Yeah, and, the, and Van Wert last week had a chance to salvage their season. That game with Bath was really a playoff elimination right. game, and the Wildcats prevailed with the late defensive stand. So uh, for Van Wert, uh, you know, mathematically they're still alive, but they're not going to be in the playoffs, and Bath is still has a chance. And that game was the defining pivot point, I think, for Van Wert. Uh, their season's gone south. Bath still has hope with Shawnee Kenton and Elida to go. They'll still need some help, and the odds are still against them, even if they went out, but they certainly have hope to make the playoffs. They've got those, those first two are very winnable games, in my opinion, too. Oh, no doubt. Another surprise for me was Lormy starting 0-4, but at this point, every, there's four teams, 3-1 and one now, atop the NWCC, so they're not out of the league title at all. They've won three in a row, seem to be riding the ship there a little bit. Well, Lormy had a horrible injury situation where they, they lost several of their quarterbacks right in a row, so they, they really had to dial back what they thought they were going to be able to do offensively, and I don't care how deep you are, if you lose three quarterbacks, you're in trouble. Without a doubt. So, will Lima Senior make the playoffs as we take a look at the seedings on Joe Hytel, that's where, that's my source anyway. They're sixth right now in Region 6. Do, are they going to make the playoffs? I think they will, but I think they need to beat but they're going to beat Clay, so yeah. let's just skip yeah. over yeah. that. You've got St. John's at home this week, and they're at Central Catholic. They probably need to beat one of them. Uh, if they don't, they still could slide in as the number eight, but that would mean they get to play LaSalle, which would be bad news. So uh, I think they will get in, and I, I'm hopeful that they'll win at least one of those two important games they have left so they get a chance to host a game as well. But they, I think they definitely need to win one of those games to have a shot to host. And 
if they don't, they could just be the eight seed at best. Yeah, I, I think they're going to get in, but I agree with you, Todd. They need to go two and three to even have a legitimate shot to get that four seed and host a game. If you're on the road, funny things can happen, although as Lima Senior found out a year ago at home, funny things can happen in second half of playoff games. Mm -hmm. Clay St. John Central Catholic was left on that schedule, and I think that's, that's a two-on-one schedule based on what I've seen of the Toledo teams and the teams that are in the track. Can they get the other points, though, those second-level points mm -hmm. that can vault them? You want Finley to get some wins, you know, especially with, uh, you know, the win last week. They got the defense is what got the job done for them last Friday night up at Donnell Stadium. If you're a Lima Senior Spartan or a Spartan fan, you're rooting for Finley to run the table as well and go 3-0. So those second-level points could get you to that four seed. Yeah, and like you're talking, you're rooting for Piqua. You're rooting for Middletown. You're rooting for Harding to somehow win games in their leagues. Because every time they do, that'll help you as well. Yes, it does. You need those second-level points because, uh, especially if you're in that four-five range, it'll come down to tenths of a point. You know, one point over a whole season could be the difference. And if Pickwell loses instead of wins in week eight or week nine, that could be the difference. Tough to project it all the way out, but assuming a win over Clay in week nine, a week a win this week against St. John's would pretty much guarantee them at least a spot, not a I, home I'll, game. I'd predict you if they beat St. John's Friday night, I I think they will quote unquote have clinched. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, that they'll get that many points. I think if they win this Friday, you can wipe off. Will they be in? To where will they be seated? Right. Yep. All right, so an important game. You'll be able to see it on WOSN Saturday at 7 p.m. when the Spartans host St. John's. So now to the MAC. Marion Local and Fort Recovery both lost last week. Marion Local to Coldwater, Fort Recovery to Minster. Now they play each other, Flyers and Indians. Who bounces back and gets the win? I got Marion Local. I mean, I, I, I thought that was just an epic game with them in Coldwater, and you know, nothing has changed with me. It's Coldwater and Marion Local and then everybody else, and that's not to disrespect everybody else, but I think Marion will bounce back and get the win. You know, if. If that could have got to overtime, I'm pretty sure they would have won that game last week at Coldwater, and I, but it didn't, not to take anything away from the Cavaliers, but I like Marion Local. This sounds like a guy that might have won $11,000 on a 50 game. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> I, I think Marion Local as well, just for the simple fact of, you know, bouncing back, still sending a message that even though we did not win this game with Coldwater, and unless Coldwater slips up, Coldwater's going to be that outright MAC champion now, you know, send a message but you still got a very good fort recovery team in front of them a team that i know tim goodwin and his staff are not taking lightly by any stretch of the imagination and conceivably you know could make a very deep run in division seven region 26 as well perhaps another matchup with minster who knocked them off this past week uh in the regional finals perhaps depending on how seeds play out i still like fort recovery to win the division seven state championship but they're going to do it with two losses. I, I, I don't see Marion Local slipping up this week as they host for recovery. Marion Local hasn't lost back-to-back -back games in almost exactly five years. It was October 15th and October 22nd of 2010. They lost to Coldwater and then Delphi St. John's. I don't see them losing to Coldwater and then for recovery. So we're all in agreement, which means probably not going to happen. <laughs> to college football now, Ohio State hosting Penn State at night. First night game at the shoe, right? And we're going with the blackout. So are they tempting fate? by asking their fans to wear all black and, and going with this theme. Interesting uh, line of thought. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the, the uniform stuff, it, it, it's so commonplace now. You almost can't have a special event because every week's a special event. What's so special about it? Oh, we're wearing black and it's at night. Wow, I'm impressed. Are they tempted fate? No, they're going to beat Penn State. They're marketing this thing as Dark Night at the Shoe. Batman's going to be there? Well, there'll probably be somebody dressed up as Batman, but when you say Dark Knight in Ohio State, you think back to Earl Bruce in 1987 when they lost to Indiana, and he called it the darkest day in Ohio State history. <laughs> you think black uniforms in Ohio State and Penn State, you might think back to 1994 when the Ohio State Buckeyes wore black socks on their trip to Happy Valley, their first game in Happy Valley as a member of the Big Ten against the Big Ten Penn State Nittany Lions. And the Nittany Lions behind a historic offense, put 60-plus points on those black socks-wearing Ohio State Buckeyes. There's some bad mumbo-jumbo going out there about this game, trying to put all this, this hype onto a game against a Penn State team that's 5-1. and one. However, it's a Penn State team that has yet to play outside the state of Pennsylvania this year. That, that's one of the most fraudulent 5-1 and one teams you'll ever see. The Buckeyes are going to take care of business, whether they're wearing black, pink, purple polka dots, yellow, 
or maize now, and blue. Now, Gene they're Smith said they're not Oregon, so I don't think they're going to ever wear purple polka dots. Yeah, you know what I say to that? Don't ever be surprised with that. <laughs> whatever comes. You can say you're not Oregon, but who would ever thought they'd do what they've already done? So That Nike money talks. That's right. That's for certain, but I don't foresee anything too extreme going forward. Um, I'm interested to see the see them on the players. We've seen the mock-ups yeah. all over social media, and they've talked about it all throughout the week. Mark, you were there on Monday with Coach Meyer. And which, Coach, which Braxton and, uh, Miller said, have you seen the uniforms? They were like, no, we haven't seen them yet. We've seen pictures. He's like, yeah, those pictures are usually fake. So they don't even know what they're wearing yet? I, th I think they, they probably know. know. Yeah. Braxton they know. just being coy. But right. the, the hot rumor is next year they'll wear all gray uniforms. Okay. I like that. Yeah, I agree with you guys. I think the best game in the Big Ten will be Michigan, Michigan State. Well, there's no terms, question yeah. about that. In terms then, of whether it's close or not, yeah. yeah. So. Iowa Northwestern is going to be an interesting That's matchup, a good too. That very much could determine who's going to win the Big Ten West. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's close with the NFL. The Bengals are undefeated, so that begs the question, will they run the table and match 72 Dolphins and 07 Patriots, who my Giants kept from getting the perfect season in the I, Super Bowl? I don't know that it begs that question. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I think uh, Nick Bonacani and the guys can already pour their champagne. They're going to be fine. Bengals are going to lose. Sure they but are. But you look at their schedule, and I ask this question, who's going to beat the Bengals right now? And they have some tough road games coming up. They, Denver at the end of the year. Right. they got to go to Pittsburgh. Yeah. I'll throw a bone out there. they got to go to Cleveland, too. Right. You look at the rest of the Bengals' schedule after getting past Seattle, this Bengals team might do something crazy and go 16-0, 15-1. At Arizona, could be tough week 10. Yes. Um, Big Ben returns in Pittsburgh, like you said, I think, week eight. But, yeah, they look good right now. I mean. Oh, I, I think they're going to have a gaudy record. I just, they're, they're not going to run the table. I, that's not going to happen. But 13-3, and 14-2, and two, sure, that could, that's within the realm of possibility. And what's going to be the record after January 7th? That's the important question. That's all that matters. I mean, it, and this team is going to have to live with it. They could go 15-1, and 16-0. and 0. Nobody will even care about that. They just want to know if they win a playoff game. So it, it is what it is. It's a good story right now, no doubt. Feels like there might be one undefeated team in the regular season this NFL season, the way it's going. Might be the Pats again, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it plays out. NFL will find a way to make sure New England doesn't go undefeated yeah, this year. Yeah, especially after everything <laughs> that went on in the offseason. All right, well, thanks, everybody. Good job, as always. That's going to do it for Press Row, and we'll be back next week to talk more high school sports.